Maybe your next topic we're going to be upon right now is CRISPR. I don't think if you haven't heard about the CRISPR system, I'll tell you more. It is to be able to genetically modify your DNA. Boom. Now, boom. Scientists, this came out. I remember in 2016 that I was listening to when this CRISPR system came out. And I was just like, wow, genetically modified babies, designer babies, to be able to make sure that your kid comes out with a superior immune system to be able to age slower, have have the ability to not contract any disease and and just be superior in everything. Like, hey, that's my kid running on the treadmill at like 25 miles per hour. Have you ever seen that before? guess what he's five years old this next thing is the CRISPR to engineer a new superbug that's invincible to all viruses so this is what they just did this just came out where this CRISPR is a technology that can be used to edit genes is a way of finding a specific bit of DNA and this team at University of Cambridge used CRISPR to replace over 18,000 codons which, by the way, codons is a combination of 64 DNA triplets, Damn, which is translated know. into 20 amino acids. Okay. Wow. And amino acids help us break down. Right? Yeah. No, there, was- there, there, are, there are only 20 amino acids. Every, every other combination is just another replication of those 20 amino acids. So what they did is they replaced okay. the redundant amino acids and they made 18,000 other codons with these synthetic amino acids that don't exist anywhere in the natural world. The result is a bacteria that virtually is resistant to all viral infections because it lacks the normal protein door handle that viruses need to infect the cells. So if it doesn't have a way in, then how are you going to get infected? And this is the beauty of CRISPR and the beauty of genetic, um, genetic enhancements and modifications. So the this this comes into a debate. Is it ethical to play God? Should we play God in this instance? And if you see yourselves as a biocomputer, and you know we are both. We all here are coders and we usually are able to write our own code and make our own programs and even make games and stuff like that, play Sims, whatever we want. Is it ethical to do that in our own body on a, on a humanity scale? I think that's the wrong question. What is right? It's not a question of ethics, Jeremy. You you morally. by making people not able to get as sick, you continue genetics or genes that nature may have selected for destruction. We already do this. We have, as a species, defied the natural selection of nature to the point where we were that a lot of people that exist uh, probably wouldn't have existed uh, it had natural selection weeded out the strongest of us. And I probably included in that. Lots of people probably included in that. Okay, another species has billions of things walking around consuming everything unsustainable. There's a reason that's unsustainable. It's not because human beings are just these greedy lunatics, because we are, but we've allowed ourselves to mass such a long duration and we create systems that allow us to have the best possible chances of survival. We defy the very laws of nature. And there we have all these problems in nature that we have to solve because we created them by not obeying the laws of nature. Let's look at this in companies too. When you have companies that get money, that basically get lended money with no interest rate, what are you effectively saying? Somebody that may not have the efficiency that a, that a free market would have destroyed, you are allowing to die. You are allowing inefficient or 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 or, or unprofitable um, or un you know unstable companies to exist when they may not. Have should be this thing when the new market conditions would have gotten rid of it we look at china and we say the chinese government backstops 70 percent of their businesses and it pays them to exist even though the market would probably crush many of them and that's not anything about the people that run the people in them that's just these things work so i think the question is 
should we continue to further deny the laws of is it sustainable for the planet with Mars or theorize about living on Mars because we find the law of nature here. So the way our race effectively grow, as we understand it, is to continue to defy the nature. Now, this, in my mind, creates dilemma. It creates dilemma of you will make people who will live forever or will live very long, who will naturally give more, you know, genetic, uh, you know, uh, strengths to their offspring. Meanwhile, the people that can't afford it won't. So you will create an isolated part of society because you're, this isn't just like everyone's going to do this and fix it themselves. You're going to create a, like a class of people. This will become a niche product. This will become like a thing where you have like the superhumans and then all. The so things. you're talking about a movie that Matt Damien was in Elysium. Do you believe it's going to be something like that where the that? higher society is in space that is able to get all this health care yeah, that they want and on earth they're just trying to scavenge and survive and everything like that no, no of course not what, actually that's i have a better movie that will challenge and relate the to this the, well the reason it's lunacy is because everyone on earth isn't just i don't, I don't imagine everyone on earth is going to be like yo guys you want to you mine this planet to death so we can go ahead because when you live on space and you depend on it what you would have so much power you'd be like we say no, and then your entire society, what are you going to come down? You know, you're going to have your entire society come back down here? You know, in those movies, they, they have like this... Well, let, me, let, me, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. CRISPR has been used to genetically modify tomatoes. Tomatoes now are on the market that are genetically modified to not rot as quickly. So they're, they are able to make fruit or modify plants and animals and humans anything that has dna so right. what is it to say that they can't just make a seed that is uh, super growth and be able to plant it and then have a society on their own because to make that society will require a substantial a quintessential investment by us on earth you can't get society on Mars. Tech related, like you have to build that infrastructure. You need the raw materials. You're not going to find all that's Mars. Everything you get, most likely you're going to have to bring with you or import from an entirely other world, which right now is about six to seven months to get to Mars. Oh, definitely. So, so you have a huge issue. You're going to have a lot of dependence. As far as I know, we haven't found a wealth of natural resources on Mars, you know, that are really just good, that, that are used for everything from building to, to food to healthcare. Uh, you know, you don't have the same laws of physics. I mean, you have the same laws of physics. You don't have the same gravity. You have different, con uh, um, you have different considerations to make when engineering things, when building things. And that's going to take you and ever. You know, you're, when we start finally landing people on Mars to start terrifying, it, it's probably just decades of Degrees and figuring out how to build and maintain things there before we're ready to try and build a dome that people will live on. And even then, I don't, have to figure I, out what... I, I do disagree with that because Why? we have computers, we have physics engines. All we have to do is change the gravity rate, and then we're able to use the same um, experiments and the same structures that we have on Earth, and we can move it over to Mars. All we have to do is change a couple of, of numbers when we do physics we don't do physics having numbers already in the variables no we do physics in creating these equations we have little letters like alpha beta gamma vega anything like that and then we input our units right yeah i don't so, doubt it. i don't i don't doubt that you're about that it sound i doubt how much money it costs let's say you build a model and you say i know exactly how much material and manpower that it costs to build this dome and it's going to have 30 people and I'm going to ship these people. Do you know how much money that is going to cost? You better be, you better be goddamn right because that's going to be trillion dollars of investment to send partial people. derivatives, invest. people, partial but derivatives. If, that's, no, but that's, that's fine. But if you, but if use. you make them even on earth, right, even on earth, we do think correctly and things still break. The only difference is we have the resources that are. If you're up there and problem you didn't foresee or a, 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 a catastrophe occurs, who's to say that you're going to be able to deal with this effectively? So you're going to. I'm not going to do that. Couldn't happen. In theory, if we 
just the right way. And we supported the growth for a long time. We, cr- I'm sure we could create some form of society on Mars, but it would need a substantial amount of money, effort, and investment from us. Plus, who's going to build up there? Going to have a bunch of, you know, scientists build infrastructure. You know, you could have robots do it, but that's going to, I don't think our robots are, are ready for that kind of project. So, that so kind of what would you say? Should we build beams, on Mars we ship, or should we, we build a bunch in of the there. atmosphere? Uh, I think our first thing we should do is fix the problems we have now. We have a habit of humanity of saying, oh, that's broken on to the next thing. Disregard. You know, I don't like that thing. I'm done with my food. Throw away half of it. I don't like mm-hmm. that tech anymore. Just ditch it. Like, oh, our planet's not doesn't have enough room up. Like, we'll on another one. Like, that's not the solution. We can these problems are not these problems are fixable. What they require is a sacrifice of people over a long period of time. But we come a cold in many many first world countries that are very much about only what we want now. So we care about the future and being on the forefront. How much investment will it take to make the forefront? And what's the opportunity cost of that investment? Is it the opportunity cost is being able to fix things on Earth? Then is it really the best decision to invest all that time, energy, and money in building other society when the society we have right we still have mass we still have poverty problems in first world countries? Forget third world countries that are just not even on the map for half of even half the things we take for granted every day, and we're already like we're going to make another society. It, it's it's. You're right. Look, if you're if you're a private investor and you've made your money and you want to fund yourself, you be my. But when the government starts saying we're going to start taking tens and hundreds of billions of taxpayer dollars that we can't have to start programs so we can beat the other nations who don't care about their affairs, that'd be a problem. That that's so, going to be a problem. So you're right. We shouldn't focus on excavating the universe when we can't even take care of our own world. This place is the earth. And I'm not even talking about, oh, bad climate. We we have literal every, we, we want to go and make a society on, we haven't perfected the societies on earth. And we're going to go make another one on Mars. So you're just going to invite a whole new list of variables into that equation when you don't even have this to figure out. You we're not I mean? even a first world country and yet we're skipping steps over here trying to be a first world country when we don't even have the technology. China just came out with their own sun um, fusion reactor where it's able to hold a temperature of 120 degrees Celsius for a total of 101 seconds. Like that is great. That is awesome. But it's only 120 degrees Celsius at 101 seconds. That is it's supposed to be clean fuel, clean energy. That's great. But we need that energy to be able to sustain life and not be able to pay. If we want a utopian society, we have to be able to fix our own earth first before we decide we want a utopian society somewhere else. Because yeah, guess who's going to go to Mars? The scientists, the philanthropists, the people who are able to spend money and be out there that I say, yo, dude, you were on this rock, man. We can all just chill and have peace. You know, no bombs. Let me tell you, a generation or two later, there are going to be some crazies coming out of those people. And that's just well, look, how hu- humanity human is. Human beings human beings suffer from, from greed and fear and selfishness in every way possible. To think that just because it'll be a society on Mars, it'll be different than Earth. Like maybe at first, but on time. It will become polarized, as corrupt, become as problematic, uh, and and the main fear is how much it's going to cost people. Like, like we mm-hmm. don't have the taxes to pay freaking social security after twenty fifty, but we're like, yo, we should go live on Mars. Yeah, yeah. Who's going to pay for that? Who 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 the hell is paying for? My, I'm not paying for Mars. Take my, don't take more of my money, Joe Biden. Okay, government, Republicans and Democrats, don't take any more of my money to fund your nonsense. Okay, the problems that you need cannot be solved with with one term cannot be solved with money. It will take time and energy. And we like that we focus on these things. And I think, it's really cool. but I, I don't, I don't think that we should really be, you know, planning to live on Mars uh, anytime soon. Because if we ever really do want to live on Mars and have a, have a, a stable society, an interplanetary existence, which I think we could have, we have to do it the right way. If we're just going to rush it and be like, look, we did it first. Great. You know, you want to build a boat that's three pieces of wood held together by string. You're on the water first, but that doesn't mean you're going to go very far. 
they're going to waste all that investment and all that crap. This shit hits the fan. Next thing you know, billions and trillions of dollars of money's gone and people are dead and everything's falling apart. And you're like, great. Glad to know all of our money's up there in the middle of nowhere. And what all down happened? here. With well, no- some guy wanted a cigarette because he was stressed out by this one girl. And, yeah, this be the greatest uh, too. They're gonna it, be like, we have a just a little almost. too close to the oxygen tank. Everything exploded. Mm-hmm. You guys there remember that big no flash of light air. you saw? That that habitat on Mars spent thirty years developing a trillion dollars. Only took about a second to destroy. Yeah, so, I uh, mean, it it was a great explosion. We used it for Fast and the Furious twenty. Yeah, we yeah we're Seven. still going with those. We're using the Rock's child since the Rock's kind of old. You know, he's the mentor background. And they're driving little spaceships now. Let me yeah, tell I, you, I, they, those guys went to Mars, hijacked some Lamborghini over there, and brought it back. And, and launched it off the planet did. and somehow survived it back through Earth's atmosphere without burning up. It's this the new age metal. Like, okay. Yeah, and all they We're had was just joke, like a little capsule on their head just to say, I can breathe, and Vin Diesel survived. Right. If Vin Diesel lands on fire, the <laughs> Just smashed into the ground, goes thirty feet underground. He gets up. He's like, "That was great. See you, see you in Fast and Furious 21. Because Vin Diesel will be forever. That's the thing. He'll just never die. That's the that's the thing. Like, yep. Mm. They'll talk about subdermal armor. You know, like still, like liquid nano steel. So, so hitman. back to the real question. The debate. I I think that I I don't. I think is that the CRISPR it isn't, system good? That's the real I think, question. I think right. for food. I think for food, my the resource like that yes. For people, I I I, I don't I, I don't think it's going to end well for us. But for food, I, I mean, I don't see what the problem is. Like, you know, I, I think it's cool if you want to get rid of like terrible diseases. Like if you know that you're going to be born a mental deficiency or some type of physical deficiency, you can alter with this. Fine, I, I understand that if people can can afford it. But the problem is you start making it so that people live forever. If you start making it so genetically predisposed to like never get sick, never be get never get ill, then those people will mate, and over time, will that create, you know, superhuman that are far superior to other? You know what I mean? And what does that do to society? That I don't think is a good idea. That's know, the but cycle. I don't, but I don't but think it's about. I think God. you're looking it at the wrong way. Um, I think if we're not supposed to be messing with stuff like this, then it wouldn't be so attainable and i'm taking a very optimistic point of view as saying i don't believe it's playing god when it could be a evolutionary benefit and or you know part of science or progression of mankind to discover their own genome to then enhance and or benefit benefit from being able to use and pretty much enhance themselves and it's not necessarily it's just understanding how to use a computer just because you know how to use a computer doesn't mean you know how to write code. Once you know how to write code, that doesn't mean you're doing things against the computer. You just understand it better. And so, in- what, what I'm okay. But what I'm saying is consumption. If, if we all didn't need to consume so much, that's fine. But our populations now limit on what we can produce and what we can handle. That was creating the, question, the ability. Though. But if, if you genetically modify people, they will live longer. They'll have more thing that will live longer, higher okay. probabilities then, of birth. Then let's let's, let's go off that. Let's go off that. Let's say that you're able to live longer. You're able to your your cell decay is actually so slow that you don't even need food. You don't even need to worry about your glucose levels. You don't even need to worry about anything. You just live. Okay. okay. That means you're not consuming consuming ninety percent ninety nine percent of what we're consuming right now is gone. You're able to make a utopian society in which we don't have to worry about people that are starving in the world. You are just able to live because there is no salve decay. Okay. And if there is, it's barely any. Okay. So in that extreme example, you gained world peace and solved all of humanity's problems. Um, I think we'll blow each other up over this technology before we solve world peace with it. Think about you, you, when you say you told, okay, so people don't consume anymore, right? Well, in order for that to be valid, all the people that work these jobs and these businesses and these industries, the millions and millions of people, they better all be modified to long too. Because if they're not, what you'll actively do is leave them with less. And then you'll have, because that's the thing, if this is a technology that's affordable and, and accessible by the mass amount of humanity, if not, 
It's just like people going on Bezos' his little blue engine for $30 million. You know, you're only going to get to see space if you're rich as shit. Well, you know then, I mean? then that's that's the flip side, right? If you don't have to eat, then eating is a delicacy. Everything is a pleasure. And then you're only living life for pleasures. But that is that is death the laws of nature. Of course like, it goes right. against the, the reason, laws of nature we, because everything the, has to die. Right. But what I'm saying is if 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 think of it this way, if the earth lived in harmony and we have all these new problems we're trying to take care of clean energy and these clean fuels, these are things we created. Nate was balanced and in harmony before, right? The it, ecosystems never consumed more than needed. Invasive species existed, but it wasn't anywhere near as prevalent as the human race. We come along and we're already invasive. We take and destroy and consume everything. We re re we form and, and, and manipulate. We just we the earth are already. That has proved uh, detrimental, you know, to to the future of our own race. Not to the we'll be dead. The Okay, the, the plastic bags ain't killing Earth, right? The Earth, the earth is going to be perfectly friggin' fine. Okay? Humanity may not be fine. Life will always end away. Even if the Earth, all the ice caps melt on the ground, well, eventually the, these things will right themselves over time once we are no longer influencing the climate. We are creating or pushing this way to some degree, right? There isn't necessarily as much climate science to suggest that of the, the correlations between all these things, but denying that we have had an impact and our impact is getting larger, which is what people are calling and to, to see something. But that's because we created the problem. We're solving problems that we create. We create these problems as we are now. Imagine if we we created these societies with all of this technology. It wouldn't make us more with nature. We wouldn't want less. You know, we, we wouldn't settle for this. You'd set for fine society. It's the most beautiful place to live, the finest technologies. And as we know, these all these, all these uh, clean energies, the, 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 the metals and resources to build the batteries and the components, these things are actually, they need to be mined. Taken from the earth, we need to deplete resources. Like we need to pull them from the earth. It's not just like, oh, we don't need it. Like lithium, we need. Um, uh, there's a list. There's a whole list of where it is. Well, where well, is the well. Let me let me just tell you this. Uh, aside from going to Mars, we could always mine asteroids. You got to catch them. Hey, we, who's we, gonna land? Josh, yeah, it looks I should like call you got Bruce, something to say on that. I see you over there. You're over there, like, hop on an asteroid. <laughs> let me at him. They landed on okay. an asteroid already, which was like damn impressive. Was it? Wait, what landed? Landed on an asteroid? Let's see. They had something land on an asteroid. It was it like a little uh... drone? Because I didn't think we could like we could intercept onto an asteroid. Imagine landing that and then getting that back. Yeah, that's what I. Let's see. Um. NASA just landed on an asteroid yeah. in 2020 and hopefully scooped up material for the first time in its history. Right. So this is very early. Take we that talking flat about like Earthers. Well, okay. I, I think in, I think in the flat Earth theory, so are asteroids, but they just believe that they're floating in some, above some like dome firmament thing that you know, it, you know, is nonsense. Everything's a hologram, right? We landed on an asteroid. That's bro. That's NASA. They're all like, it's again, a bro. lie. It's a lie. It's all a lie. <laughs> well, I mean, they definitely like landing on an asteroid. Fine, but mining asteroids, you have to find the asteroids with the material. Then, the like, imagine the investment and the insurance on the investment to land a rig on an asteroid, attach that rig, and have it actually not only mine, but then somehow get that off and have something else intercept it to collect that to bring it back to Earth to then use it. A lot of work. So, because my theory is like, we already, it is expensive for us to do it now. And the earth, like, we don't have to go anywhere. Like, we don't have to deal with all these variables. You start saying that is a supply of resources. Maybe one day, again, I agree with you. In the future, we may get to that point, but we're not there yet. We don't have the kind of money to pay for that. I don't even know if any individual company has the money to pay for that, regardless of a like, government. Not to mention, we don't really know. Like those, those findings will help us find out what's in these rocks, which I imagine are like baser metals and stuff, stuff that we could use for manufacturing. I mean, but from... our biggest thing is oil and lithium, these other components that I don't know if they're floating around in asteroids. So, yeah, lithium so... is abundant in space. Where, definitely. In asteroids? Yeah. Definitely. There, there's diamonds, gold, platinum. In the asteroids, right, right, but, we, yeah. but accessing there's, there's them is all extremely that stuff, right? difficult. Well, yeah, you, it's called gold. hitting a gold mine. Like if... if uh, uh, you know, freaking giant size 
asteroid the size of Texas, you know, of gold is, is flying through space, everyone's going to see that as a huge payday. But, but, it's but, how do you thing, get to it? Right. It's a huge payday until it comes to Earth. And then you know what happens? Like yeah, we yeah, just yeah, capture sure. a 50 sure. megaton asteroid, yeah. the Deflation. market gets filled with supply, and then all of a sudden gold is literally nothing. Deflation which of you that could... asset. So yes. then so we use gold for its actual in... scientific, you know, value instead Purpose. of for its, yeah. Gold is yeah. super valuable in science. Forget having it as an accessory. Low conductivity. That's just stupid. Let's use it for space as it's meant to be and has been so, you know, valuable for all our missions. But again, I rest my mining, case. Okay, guys, thank you for joining our show. Out, this is Random Rabbit. We are going to be broadcasting for the rest of, of the space. week. Very we are difficult. we are numbing, and now you cannot hear why anymore. This is the intro exit music. We are finally coming to the end of podcast number four. I am super excited. The one viewer might be Wyatt's girlfriend, but if it's not Wyatt's girlfriend, thank you. Um. Everybody, uh, I just like to just take a moment to think, and you know the support has been unreal. Uh, oh, hey, yeah, why is done talking? Let me just bring you guys back. <laughs> oh, I love, I love power. You're just calling opinion. No, they will see you as a tyrant. They will see you as the tyrant that you are, Josh, and they will take you down, hang you by your bootstraps from the trees, and they will beat you with sticks. Uh, n no one's <laughs> expecting any Josh? character outside of that though wait so you're, you're, wait, that's your role you're the tyrant of the show is that all right you? guys we'll you're... see you all later we love you let's dance this one out mm, 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 mm. i'm living i'm living with they're both the same blood it's like i'm fighting a bloodline it's like two entire different like <laughs> families mm, mm, mm. Look at that. I don't know Look where my mouth is. Uh, 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 uh. But yeah, we're uh, definitely going to continue this debate. I, I, I'll I, see you guys later. Drinking my mining, coffee. Mining things out of asteroids. Mm, mm. <laughs> All right, guys. That Ice was, coffee is great. That was a good podcast. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely keep continuing it because, uh, you know, obviously someone needs to be taught what science can do in a realistic Wait, I have a question. If basis... I dissent from your opinion, that <laughs> makes me stupid. How does that, how does that? So this guy has a different, he's clearly stupid and needs to be re-educated when we return. <laughs> when we return, the beating sticks. I want he comes back. Don't mind the blood on his face. I I'll I'll be I'll what be it'll, it'll, there will be blood be on my face, but it'll be it'll be rubbing it off because it'll be like, you know, Aztec no, no. all those cicadas. And then I'll just disappear, and I'll ride with my army of cicadas <laughs> to you, and I will eat you. Ooh. I will have cicadas eat you, even though traditionally I don't think I eat people. I will, I will train them. You, yeah, you have seventeen years to train them to eat people. I'll just use science. I'll just get microchips in their brains, hardwire their little robotic tendencies and compulsory, and just basically steer them to hive mind and direction. And this.